Hello guys and welcome to TG and the Game Nerd, the show where I talk about our play games and today we're going to be playing Super Mario Sunshine. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and finished up Gelato Beach, we met the infamous Sandbirds, raced against Il Piantissimo, and we had a fair amount of fun. In this episode, Peach has been kidnapped by Shadow Mario it seems, and it is our job to try and go get her back. So without further ado, let's get in. I actually... I have something to confess later in the video. But I'll do that a bit later, because we've got about a, a lot of plot stuff coming up right now. And I don't want to, you know, pause the video and stand here for a minute explaining stuff. So I'll just explain that later. Pina Island, this is a place we've heard quite a lot about, uh, or at least we've seen it a lot in a bunch of different levels like Rico Harbor and Gelato Beach, so I'd say it's time we finally go there, and we do that in the coolest way possible, by hopping in a cannon. <laughs> Pina Park Episode 1, Mecha Bowser Appears. So, quite unlike usual, we have a sort of Shadow Mario Chase-esque uh, mission in, at, as the uh, very first mission instead of the last one like normal. Once we get through that loading screen, we're now in the actual park part of Pina Park, and we just want to follow him. He makes his way over to this pool here. Amazing! What a spectacle! Is this a new show of ours? You guys are great! Whoever hired you needs a, needs a raise! I love how you play the fearless hero and he's like a bad version of you, but you both look like the same and stuff. Well, as the director of this park, I want to ensure your success, so how about I provide you with a hero's vehicle? Follow me! And the hero's vehicle is this roller coaster right here. So our first boss fight in Peanut Park is Mecha Bowser, so we know that uh, Shadow Mario probably has some sort of connection to Bowser in some way. So for this boss fight, what you want to do is you need to take these rockets and shoot them right at Mecha Bowser. There are also bullet bills coming at you from pretty much every angle, so be sure to shoot those down when you have the chance. You want to aim for his head, because I'm pretty sure that does more damage. Direct hit. I believe he only takes four hits. Not three, like the usual Mario boss fights, but four. Very strange. I guess they kind of wanted to make sure that you go around the entire roller coaster at least once. Because I'm, I'm pretty sure unless you hit, like... 
each shot perfectly, you'll probably go around the entire coaster at least once. With many big reveals with just that one cutscene, we have now gotten our first shine of Pina Park. Also, we have the camera pointing now to our next destination. We'll, of course, be going there after we do everything we need to do here in Pina Park. Uh, but interesting thing is that 3D Mario games uh, really love shooting Mario out of cannons. There were tons of cannons in uh, Mario 64. Uh, you know, obviously here in Sunshine we have one. Also, Pina Park, Episode 2, The Beach Cannon Secret. Uh... In the Galaxy games, there are a few cannons that you can get shot out of. Even in, like, 3D Land, you can get shot out of a cannon. I forget if there are cannons in, uh... 3D World and Odyssey. I'll have to look that up later. But anyways, uh, over here, to get to the next secret mission... You need to stand right here... Spray the bomb, bomb And throw it at the mole. I believe you need to do this three times and he should finally, you know, stop bothering you. If you stand too far away, he'll shoot bullet bills at you instead, which you can't really use against him. Now that the mole is dead, we can just hop right into the cannon, which somehow leads to a secret area. It's just magic, I guess. There's no really... There's no use to, you know... Wondering about the logistics of everything. Nine times out of ten, it's probably just magic. Uh, these, this background right here reminds me of Yoshi's Island, uh, which also reminds me that... Uh, I'm going to try to word, word this in a way that's not totally weird. Uh, Peach uh, was like... Oh, almost died there. Peach was, you know, of course shocked that uh, Bowser Jr. is Bowser's son, because by the way, this was Bowser Jr.'s first appearance. Uh, but she was also surprised and shocked that, um... Like, when Bowser Jr. stated that Peach was, uh... Her... 
Peach was his mom. Like, she didn't, like, deny it. She was more, like, just surprised than anything. And while that doesn't really make sense with how in the real world children are made, uh, in the Mario universe, uh, children are actually delivered by storks. Uh, and so that's a lore reason, I guess, as to why she was surprised. And it's also a lore reason as to why Mario doesn't have a belly button in Mario Odyssey, because, you know, he wouldn't have had an umbilical cord. Anyways, weird talk aside, shine number 24. Peanut Park Episode 3, Red Coins of the Pirate Ships. So this is just your typical red coin level, and that'll actually give me a chance to talk about this mistake that I made. This was the confession thing that I had to talk about earlier. Uh, so this is not the first time that I am recording these levels. Uh, a couple days ago, I actually sat down and I was like, you know what, I'm getting a bit behind on my Super Mario Sunshine levels, and I'm deciding right here, right now, I'm going to record the entire rest of the game and edit it and upload it next week. And I did. I, I had an entire three-hour recording session where I recorded the entire rest of the game. And so I finished that up, and I was like, Wow, that's awesome. I can't believe I was able to finish the entire thing in one session. It was a super long session, but you know what? It's worth it to finally have this completed. And I was like, okay, so now I need to make sure that the video file saves properly. And I was, like, completely sure to, like, triple check. I went to my videos folder, and I was like, okay, it's saved, it's here, it's not corrupted or, or anything, it's all good. Uh, and so I'm... I was like, okay, I'm glad that I was able to, you know, get this saved. And so I uh, was about to begin the editing process, and I uh, imported the video into my editing software. And I was like, okay, now it's time to get the audio file uh, of me talking and put that into the software. And I go to check the folder that has my audio files, and I'm like, where's the file for this recording session? And I... Like, I double check to make sure I'm not crazy, and, like, in the back of my mind, I'm like, crap, I don't remember saving it. And, <laughs> this is completely due to human error, but I lost, I accidentally exited out of Audacity my audio recording state, my audio recording stuff, and completely lost a three hour audio file, and just because. I like to use Audacity to record myself, not only for videos, but whenever I need to test something. Like if I want to test voice effects for future videos, or if I want to test, you know, my voice acting, like, capabilities, like if I can do a voice or not. Because I'm doing like three visual novel uh, Let's Plays after Mario Sunshine, and so I need to be sure that I can do all of the voices necessary to, you know, do all the voices necessary for all of the different characters I'll be voicing. And so, nine times out of ten, I like to just open up Audacity, record something, listen back to it, decide it's good, and then just exit out without saving. Because it's not like I need that audio file for anything. And so this time, I was just completely absent-mindedly, uh... Just completely absent-mindedly exited out without saving, and just completely lost it. So I had, where's this last red coin? So I had two options. I could either keep the original video file and just edit in commentary over top of it, or I could re-record the entire thing. And I decided to wait a couple of days and then just re-record the entire thing because it would be one hell of an editing job just to, you know, get everything, you know, and it wouldn't, Commentary wouldn't feel as natural. It would feel a lot more scripted if I if it if everything for the rest of the series was just all you know edited in audio clips. So I decided that I was just going to uh, re-record the entire thing from scratch. And so uh, the death counter the death counter kind of 
gets messed up with this because I sure did die quite a lot of times during that recording session. Uh, I'll probably still die a bunch here, but... Yeah, those original deaths are just gonna be lost to time. If I think of anything that I, uh, talked about... There's the final red coin, why didn't I grab that one originally? If I think of anything that I thought about during my original session, I'll be sure to bring it up. But yeah, that's just an unfortunate part of doing stuff like this a lot, is that eventually I'm gonna mess up and lose something. Okay, I'm gonna hop on. There we go, last red coin. That was actually kind of cool what I did just there. I, I flipped on over and sprayed to the bottom of the gr the grate, and then I used Flood to climb over top of it. I think in my original recording session I did something similar, where I fell off, used Flood to grab onto the bottom, and then used Flood again to get over to the top. But I then I think after that I immediately accidentally dived off the side here. Luckily there's nothing like that this time. Peanut Park, Episode 4, The Wilted Sunflowers. So we're actually going to be doing something on the beach this time instead of going to the park itself. I guess we technically did that with the secret, but we didn't really spend any time on the beach. We just kind of went into the cannon and did a bunch of stuff in that mission. Here, we're just gonna be hanging out on the beach all mission. These guys, from their shells, may look like Yoshis, but nope, they're completely new creatures. To defeat these guys, get close to them, walk away, and make sure that they, when they ground pound you, they land in the sand, because then they'll get stuck, and you can ground pound them themselves. So yeah, there are a bunch of sunflowers, one of these creatures, I don't know the names of them, uh, equates to one sunflower, so of course once you defeat all of the enemies, all of the sunflowers will be happy. Uh, speaking of enemy names, uh, last episode I, I learned of the names of those little electric goop gummy bear looking guys. Uh, they're called Goobles, and I just think that's the best name for any enemy ever. I know there are different sources uh, that call them different things, like, uh, well, I'll put them up on screen because I can't exactly remember them. But yeah, I think Goobal is just, like, the best name for enemy any enemy ever. But with that, we have saved all of the different sunflowers. That should go ahead and give us a shine. Alrighty, so Shadow Mario over there has kidnapped a Yoshi egg, and that leads to another level. So the next few levels, uh, I'm not sure exactly which order is supposed to be intended for the levels, but I have a very specific order that I'm going to be going with. Episode 5, The Runaway Ferris Wheel. This level is annoying if you don't know how to skip completely past it. We've already seen that, like, opening shot before, so I just decided that we could go ahead and skip past it, and nothing will really be lost there. We hadn't seen that before, so I went ahead and let that play out. Uh... The Electro Koopas over there, those are a new enemy of sorts, at least I don't think we've seen them before. They do that, they shoot out their shells at you, and they shock you if you touch them, so do your best to stay away from them. So the way that you're intended to do this level, 
I'll show you what's intended and then I'll show you the way that I like to skip completely past it. So you're supposed to head up this path right here and walk over to the back side of this huge thing. And then you're supposed to platform your way up here. I did a skip that I wasn't intending to do. Wow. Uh, so I guess that's one way to get up there. But what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to grab onto these grates, use Flood to shoot the different platforms so that they go the way that you want. And go up each individual grate while also avoiding enemies and also dealing with this terrible camera angle. I, I'm usually pretty good with, uh, I'm usually pretty lucky with cameras in 3D video games. Like, in some of these earlier games, a lot of people complain about the camera angles, but I usually get pretty lucky with the camera actually deciding to work, you know, like, function like it's supposed to. But even me there, I, that, that just, what the hell was that? Anyways, that area over there, the camera is just absolutely wonky. Funny how the second that I talk about something not working the way it's supposed to, I just clip through a bridge. Is that supposed to happen? Because it w happened when I went to over the shoulder view, like right about here. And I know that like, when you jump, like that opens up the floor a little bit, but I've never like fallen through there like Mario falls a tiny bit there but I've never clipped through it before anyways the way that I like to do things is just to completely skip by uh, there's this area right up here that you can easily get to uh, and the ferris wheel is blocking your way from jumping but if you just spin jump go as far as you can and then hold down R you can just hover right on through now, either way, either you go up the normal way or you do the skip that I do, you'll end up up here. Just go ahead and press A while you're underneath this Electro Koopa to just flip him over there into the ocean. So yeah, now with the ferris wheel slowing down, you can hop atop one of the cars and just ride your way to victory. This is probably, I haven't fact checked this, but this is probably where you can see most of the levels in this game. Obviously we can see Peanut Park, cause well, we're in it right now. Right over there we have a level that we're going to get to in probably episode 6. Uh, we have Gelato Beach over there with the Sandbird, we have Rico Harbor, Delfino Plaza, uh, Bianco Hills, and those trees right over there are from the last level in the game. There's only, I'm pretty sure there's only one level that we can't see, but that's because it's on the opposite side of the, of, uh, Corona Mountain over there. Peanut Park Episode 6, The Yoshi Go Round Secret. Is this the same opening still? Yep. Or not still, but opening cutscene, I mean. Uh, this one is a pretty tough one. Uh, it's the introduction to Yoshis in this game, which is awesome. So, for this one, what you want to do is you want to head over to the aforementioned Yoshi Go Round. And you'll see there are two different types of Yoshis here. There are pink Yoshis on the uh, inner circle there, and we have orange Yoshis on the outer, outer side of the Yoshi Go Round. And there's one mission from the outer side, so we need to go find an orange Yoshi. In order to do that, what you need to do is head on over to... Uh, this tree right here, this tree that looks like a Pianta, and right behind it, there's this guy who sees that there's a Yoshi egg right here, and it wants a banana. Yoshis work very differently in this game than they did in previous games, and games after it, where they require fruit in order for them to hatch. And so in order to find fruit, Peanut Park is unfortunate because 
in both Delfino Plaza and in a future level that I'm thinking of, th there is an easy way to get a ton of fruit, or a bunch of different types of fruit, so you don't really need to worry about searching for it. But in this level, you have to go hunting for it, and it can be kind of annoying, especially when you don't know where a certain piece of fruit is, uh, and bananas is... A banana is one of those. I have absolutely no idea. There's the bananas. Okay, they were hiding in plain sight. It's actually pretty close to where the uh, Yoshi tree is over there. It's just kind of off in this one corner that I couldn't really see all that well. So yeah, just find whatever fruit you need. Take it over to the Yoshi. I was hoping that I could throw that at Yoshi and it would just spawn, but yeah. Once you feed it the proper fruit, then you'll be able to ride on Yoshi. But as you'll notice, Yoshi is the wrong color. He's a pink Yoshi and we need to get an orange Yoshi. So in order to do this, what you need to do is find one of these fruits that I have listed on the screen. Once you've found one of those, then you will be able to transform into an orange Yoshi. Depending on what fruit a Yoshi eats, it gets a different color. Thankfully, we have one right here that'll easily allow us to get an orange Yoshi. So now with our orange Yoshi, we want to head back to the Yoshi gra go round. But yeah, just walk on over to the vac vacant area. That allows access to a secret area. This is where the secret areas start to get a bit annoying. I know that I definitely, first time going through here, experienced quite a few deaths. So if you experience deaths from in this level and in the secret areas from here on out, do not worry. I experienced them too. I didn't need to jump there. I don't know what I was thinking. Another one for the death counter. I was worried that, uh, I mentioned earlier that I was worried the death counter might be a bit off just because, you know, I already had a recording session before this and I was like, well, I died a lot in that one, so, you know, this might be disappointing because I might do better and I won't you know, get as many deaths as before, but no, I'll probably die a lot, just knowing my general lack of skill when it comes to this game. Oh, can't believe that. Using spin jumps there, if you're really good at using spin jumps in a small area, spin jumps can really help you out in getting from block to block there. Uh, hop on this spot right here and just stand still as you make your way across. This block is moving back and forth. It won't go all the way, so you'll need to make a jump there and a jump right here too. Uh, a wall jump is necessary for this part. I wonder, because I know in Mario 64 wall jumps were called wall kicks. So I wonder in which game they were officially changed to wall jumps. I'll just make a spin jump over there because I can, and that is the end of this level. Did a lot better than I thought I would. Peanut Park Episode 7, Shadow Mario in the Park. Is it going to be the same opening cutscene? Yep. Alrighty. Shadow Mario is not in the uh, beach here and is in fact in the park, so they played the same opening cutscene there. Anyways, this is pretty much the same as before, except now we have to deal with Electro Koopas, which make everything worse. I wouldn't say that they're the worst enemies in this game, but they can be pretty annoying when placed in the right spots. Still though, if you get a good combo on him and remember to spam spray a lot, then you should be good. I tried to do spin jump there and I just completely fell in the, the... This isn't really a pond, but more of just a large area of water. A pool, I guess it would be. I remember during my first recording, he did cause me a good bit of trouble just because I would sometimes lose him. And, you know, he's not moving in a straight line as much as he would in other levels, so... He can be hard to go after. I think I even had a bit where uh, I was trying to, like, 
I was trying to time it funnily. Darn it all, I won't remember this. I was trying to make the timing funny where I was like, oh man, he was really trying... He's really, uh, you know, a lot more difficult in this level, and then I was... He would, like, fall over. But I kept trying to set up that joke over and over, but he just wouldn't go down. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. In the next episode, we're gonna go ahead and head on over to that level over there and see what it has in store for us. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye